state as a claim or maybe a hypothesis, I'm saying that it is possible to minimize the confusing cues from the loudspeaker and the room. And in order to do that, uh, there are basically three things that has to be, have to be done. One is the uh, loudspeaker has to be set up symmetrical so that the symmetry of the reflections relative to the direct sound. Reflections from the room surfaces have to have a minimum delay. In other words, speaker, they have to have a minimum distance. And the spectrum of the reflection should be the same as the spectral content of the direct sound. And let me say something more about this. For the spectrum of the reflections to be the same as the direct sound, we have to have loudspeakers that have a frequency-independent polar response. In other words, they have to ra radiate in all directions, in whatever direction they radiate in. It has to be <clears throat> the same frequency response like on axis. Now, there are only a few types of loudspeakers that will do that. Number one is, of course, an omnidirectional loudspeaker. It's like having a, a light bulb, a bare light bulb that shines light every direction, sideways, upwards, down, okay, omnidirectional. Uh, the other form of loudspeaker that has uniform off-axis response is a dipole, perfect dipole. And in, in terms of a light analogy, you could think of two flashlights back to back, one shining this way, the other one shining that way. Okay. And uh, a third form is a cardioid loudspeaker, which is really just a combination of the of an omni and, and the bidirectional one. Now, for the reflections to be uh, have the same spectrum content as a direct sound. Of course, it's important that the reflection uh, comes from surfaces that do not absorb or diffuse the sound in a frequency-dependent fashion. So if I put an absorber here and it absorbs the high frequencies, then the spectrum coming back from here will have less high frequencies. It's like turning down the tweeter, right? The direct sound comes here, the reflected as a tweeter turned down. The symmetry and the delay of the reflection, the other parameter that is important here, is that uh, we have to set up the loudspeaker symmetrical. Like if I had two loudspeakers, they shouldn't be set up over in that corner here, but they should be here in the center of the room. And furthermore, the loudspeaker should have some minimum distance from the walls, like you shouldn't put the loudspeaker right against the wall, but at least a, a meter out or so. And that is this, this one meter, which means a six millisecond about time delay of the reflection, is empirical that I have found over, over time applies to really any type of loudspeaker, not just dipoles or omnis or any, any box speakers. They all improve if you get them out into the room. There's something just in our perception that tells us when you put a speaker against the room, or even worse, if you make it flush with the wall there, the sound comes off the wall. There's something unnatural happening here. Okay. Now, in, in my particular room, since it's fairly long, I have a setup here where, for instance, I have two types of loudspeakers, uh, dipoles, which are these here, and monopoles, these loudspeakers. <clears throat> and listening position A is at the apex of an equilateral triangle for both types of loudspeakers. This is sort of the critical sweet spot, the listening position I, I use a lot. But there is a further place back here, place B, where uh, I also do a lot of listening. But in either case, we are symmetrical with respect to the, with respect to the room. And here again is a picture of, of the room, with the way it actually looks physically. Here you see the two seats, A, the one close, and B, the one further away. And let's take a look at the two loudspeakers that I'm talking about here. Uh, there is one is a monopole, that's this unit here, 
schematically shown here. Uh, a six inch driver firing upwards, two inch driver firing forwards, crossover at a kilohertz, so fairly low frequency. Then there's a woofer, see over here on the side, with a downward firing 10 inch driver crossed over at uh, 100 hertz. Okay. Now, this here is, is monopole only up to a certain frequency because eventually this two inch tweeter becomes directional and points forward. That occurs in the order of three, four kilohertz in that region. But up to that frequency, it's quite, quite uh, uh, uniform uh, monopole. So here you see at low frequencies is full circle, and at high frequencies it's forward directional. The larger speaker behind it is a dipole, and it's also a three-way system. Two woofers here. 10-inch woofers, 8-inch mid-range drivers, and two tweeters back-to-back. -back. And the arrows indicate which way the cones move here. So we see dipole, dipole action. Okay, I, I will say more about those speakers later, later on. Now, clearly, what is always of interest is to measure the uh, response in the room of those lo two loudspeakers. And here you see a frequency response measurement uh, at listening position A, in other words, uh, the critical point there. And here is for the, the left dipole, the right dipole. And uh, as we compare the two, we certainly see differences. The uh, lower curve here is the time, re is the frequency response measured <coughs> in a 200 millisecond time window, so fairly long time window but still not long enough to give full resolution, for instance, at low frequencies. Room, room modes, room resonances have a bandwidth in the order of 3, 4 hertz or so. And with 200 milliseconds, you get maybe 5 hertz resolution or so. Uh, this upper curve is just the average of this lower curve. Now, for the monopole, it's the same situation. We see the response is different. It's also different between left and right. And here the top curve is the average curve, and this one here is the actual frequency response curve. So I would say most people would look at this and say, huh, these speakers need a little help there. So there probably should be some equalization playing place. This thing obviously rolls off at high frequencies. Left and right speaker maybe should be equalized differently. Uh, but then keep in mind that what we are seeing here in these graphs is really a record of what happened during 200 milliseconds of putting out sound. So these data here that we're showing uh, contains the, the, not only the direct sound from the speaker, but also the reflections from the room how the sound bounces around, interferes with itself, therefore these deep notches there, which are interferences, and peaks is where the sound adds up in frequency. Uh, so this is sort of a past record, but when we listen, we li don't listen to in 200 hertz chunks. We listen in is a continuum flow of sound. So this here is not necessarily the best way of looking at the response at, at position A here. And so I think it's important to look also what happens to the direct sound and the reflections in time. And now to measure that, a uh, little introduction here. Uh, first of all, when I say reflections, here's an example. This is a little model that I built. Here you have a dipole.